It's been hard. It's been a nightmare. I'm looking forward to getting my life back. The hardest part of this whole event has been the uncertainty. My wife left here on the 22nd of December and we had hoped that she would be returning within three weeks. Her, she went to, her mom got COVID and subsequently passed from COVID and we, that was the reason for her trip. So the, the problem really has been the uncertainty. We had the flight ban until I think it was the 31st of January. Then we heard nothing regarding when the flights would be um, opened up back and it was week after week after week of um, the health and wellness meetings and nothing was forthcoming and we didn't hear anything until I think it was middle of March really that we had an extension until the, I think the end of April uh, yeah, uh, uh, until the end of March rather. And then came the end of March, we got the further notice of the extension continuing until the end of April. So even that of itself was uncertain. After Mr. Holness's um, speech in Parliament, we and found out that the ban had been extended until the end of April, immediately we got in touch with the she got in touch with the Jamaican High Commission and they um, they advised her that there was a flight which would have been uh, coming for British nationals on the 22nd of um, April and as a result of that so it so this would have been on the 3rd of April. We contacted, uh, she contacted the Jamaican High Commission again. But it all came down to Lester Hall making it public. And because nobody was aware of the plight of these people. It wasn't until he wrote, had this article about three weeks ago, a month ago, what was really happening to Jamaican nationals. It was like the High Commission had fallen asleep. Do you believe the UK travel ban is warranted? Yes, it was warranted up to the point where it was rampant in the UK. But after it became, the, the, the British government got control of the, the COVID virus and that strain of it in England, which was, I think they got control of it in early March. But there was an article um, late in March that said that the, the B117 variant, which is a British, what they call the UK variant, is the most dominant uh, strain now in the US. And what I found uncomfortable is that we're having all these United States visitors coming here with virtually no conditions at all other than a negative test. And here, and here it is today, the, in Britain, they have a much lower infection rate than the United States, but the United Kingdom residents cannot come, not only residents, Jamaican citizens cannot come on a flight to Jamaica without these horrendous conditions. They want um, PCR tests on arrival, they want 14 days in government quarantine, but a U.S. A US visitor can come to Jamaica and roam up and down the elegant corridor freely after arriving. So it's ridiculous. It makes no sense to have, a, to have the British ban at this point. I don't know how, she's going to, how they're going to feed her at the hotel, wherever they're putting her up. But she doesn't eat meat. So... And she has to have her nuts, she has to have her cashews and her peanuts and whatever nuts that she's going to get her, um, her protein from. Other than that, they, what they're going to give her, you know, chickpeas and 
banana. I hope that they will allow her to come home directly so that I can prepare her meals for her. I, I, that's, you know, <laughs> that's pretty much what oh, it is. I do miss her. How you mean? She been my, she's been my load star for 30 years. So, you know, and I, I look in front of the 30. It's just me one. Me one and my four dog them is here. And sometimes it is so quiet and lonely. I feel like I'm going out of my mind. So it must have been some form of relief then. Relief? <laughs> that she's coming back. <laughs> no. Why? Finally. I won't believe it until the plane lands.